digging in the DevOps perspective. And uh, this is uh, from in, uh, junior to intermediate uh, uh, you know, discussion over here. And the next uh, few sessions over here, I will be preparing like uh, more intermediate and uh, professional um, you know, uh, uh, presentations. And I will share my screen and we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, that's okay. Yes. All right. All right. So to the uh, agenda is basically, uh, you know, speaking on uh, what is the, you know, DevOps, what are the different activities around this one? And also, uh, you know, looking what uh, different big data, uh, you know, architectures in uh, some of the scenario it looks like. And uh, at the end, uh, basically, uh, you know, I will be, uh, uh, presenting uh, Databricks, how workflows work over there. And uh, this will be like uh, the session over here, um, kind of hands on uh, uh, demo uh, for that one. So when, um, you know, speaking on the DevOps, we know this is basically uh, the concept over here. And uh, this concept is about, uh, you know, uh, wor uh, working uh, developer and the operation team together. And it, uh, it is like uh, whenever we do any of the development, of course, we have a plan and build. And uh, from the operation perspective, when we deploy anything and we operate uh, uh, during this one. So this is kind of a continuous integration and continuous feedback so that uh, uh, the, uh, the software at the end uh, uh, will be delivered as the business requirements. Uh, and, and it brings a lot of uh, uh, advantages uh, along with this one, because uh, there is a, uh, what business actually needs, um, it fulfill all the, uh, all the requirements uh, following the DevOps uh, you know, approach. And this is a kind of a close uh, focus on this one that what we see during the you know, build session, during the development, we normally, you know, we plan, we code, and we build and test. And um, the integration portion over here, of course, uh, during this cycle over here in operation, we know these are the activities like uh, we deploy the code once it's uh, completed, we operate, monitor. So basically, this integration brings all the continuity between the uh, between the two stages over here, dev and uh, op over here. So we see continuous uh, deployment and continuous monitoring and continuous integration so that, um, you know, uh, anything happens uh, like uh, in a format of uh, uh, today world over here, like we are working always in the sprint format. So we have a scrim, uh, a scrim um, 15 days or uh, three weeks, it depends upon, uh, uh, you know, the organization to organization. And the big thing over here, we are going to discuss more emphasize is, um, you know, how DevOps and big data approaches uh, uh, will benefit uh, big data, uh, you know, um, approaches over here, how the, um, you know, mesh and uh, give a, a full fledged benefit to the organization for the final delivery of the, you know, um, of the application. So when we say big data, so basically, uh, you know, all the structured, non-structured, semi-structure and uh, 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 the data when it's collected uh, and it brings a lot of challenges when we say, uh, when we have big big data, so a um, lot of, uh, you know, it brings challenges. How we maintain it, how we manage it, how we integrate different kinds of the data for uh, uh, getting end goal of the business. And um, so it means that, um, you know, um, we have more data means that we, we are solving, um, you know, more complex uh, kind of uh, business related issues uh, with the, uh, with the big data um, 
to, uh, tools over here. So when uh, we say big data, so it means that I'm going to basically focus on uh, one of the tool, which is uh, Databricks. And uh, this Databricks tool over here basically uh, brings all the uh, important uh, uh, you know, uh, components that have uh, from, you know, uh, as a one, uh, as a, uh, you know, a one shop where we can do analysis, we can visualize the, uh, you know, information and also we process the data. And um, when organization basically, um, you know, uh, in this big data role over here, uh, uh, we have data engineers, we have data scientists and uh, we have business analysts and uh, so they can basically use the single tool to have uh, you know all the um, all the uh, all the visual uh, all the visualization of the data so when we say big data so normally we have several activities around this one so first of course um, we need to have a, some tool which basically collects the data and like apache kafka or even tab so we we have tools that brings all the data inside, uh, you know, uh, inside the storage. So uh, data storage uh, need to be very flexible for the big data. So, you know, normal, um, you know, SQL server or structured data, which deals mostly with the structured data is not, uh, you know, um, kind of um, uh, when we deal with the big data, we need, um, you know, um, data, Delta Lake, um, data lake in the Azure cloud, right? And uh, different cloud services provide different types of uh, storages and um, and like uh, S3 bucket in uh, uh, Amazon. And um, of course, uh, data processing is another activity over here, which uh, which is the main one. Um, we use a different type of, uh, you know, tools, Apache, Spark, like data, uh, data breaks. We use PySpark, uh, you know, to get all the distributed uh, computations happen um, because this uh, whole about, uh, you know, processing uh, data uh, through the Spark. So it deals with, uh, you know, uh, batch processing and also real time uh, processing. And data analysis, um, after, you know, getting all those um, uh, data and, uh, uh, we clean all the data and and do all the analysis on that one, and finally for the business is uh, the activities uh, you know we need to provide, we visualize their data so that it can be presented perfectly uh, you know to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the business use. So this is um, how we look uh, today. Um, that uh, how a modern data warehouse looks like. When we say modern data warehouse means that uh, we are talking about, uh, you know, lake houses uh, in Databricks that uh, all the files are like stored into the storage. And then um, uh, with the help of the Databricks as uh, spoke that, uh, you know, uh, we have a tool which use like a, a, a Spark framework which basically helps in uh, you know all the different kinds of distributed um, storages it can link and it can basically uh, get the data. So normally we have uh, you know uh, this scenario over here, which I'm showing over here, is uh, basically um, you know uh, if we have anything uh, uh, you know through the uh, uh, through through the Azure services, we copy through even tabs or Kafka, um, um, uh, you know, uh, different uh, different um, uh, ingestion tools. And we we basically load the data into the storages uh, in the raw format. So it always, we keep that data in the original format uh, for future use. And then uh, basically with the data breaks and with the ADF pipelines, we orchestrate and we clean the data and uh, put into a format uh, where you know it is clean and we can basically uh, make rules on that top of this one. So these activities, uh, if they are simple, uh, you know, normally we do uh, using the ADF, uh, uh, you know, ADF service of the Azure cloud. So different clouds have different services. I'm just uh, you know focusing in this presentation, uh, taking a one Azure, uh, you know, uh, uh, tools over here when I'm presenting uh, during uh, you know this session. 
So, uh, so it basically transform and uh, uh, the data and, uh, you know, the data warehouse. And uh, so transform means we apply a different rules, what business actually needs, uh, you know, and also in the demo, I will have some, you know, thought on that one, how we do this one. And uh, finally, uh, you know, uh, when we are serving, we are, we can, you know, uh, put a, some analysis in some of the, you know, Databricks notebooks. So these are basically, you know, Databricks uh, and notebooks over here where we, we, we basically, uh, you know, scientists over here can basically do analysis more comprehensive uh, when they use the code. And in other way over here that, um, you know, we can use uh, different pipelines, automated pipelines uh, and for, kind of, uh, you know, ETL activities. Uh, it might be lighter, it will, um, uh, you know, lighter, uh, lighter type of ETL, we can yeah, basically process the data th uh, through the ADF pipeline. So here, and architecting means that it can link to different, these, um, you know, notebooks and create a flow and from end to end, the ADF pipeline help in this uh, regard uh, to, uh, to have, if, uh, you know, a, all the data go automatically uh, through the, that process when we have an automated system. And uh, of course, um, Azure Cloud, uh, Cloud have, uh, you know, um, Synapse SQL, which basically a data warehouse and uh, it uh, uh, by using, uh, you know, all these um, uh, structure over here, it's kind of uh, providing the same kind of a services like Databricks provides. But uh, this more like, um, you know, related over here with um, the approach over here uh, can be basically duplicated into the synapse as well. As, uh, you know, as the uh, different companies tools are like, yeah, you know, they are optimizing, they are enhancing. So all the functionality is like uh, kind of, um, you know, duplicated, but some are, um, you know, more, um, uh, you know, more intense into some area and like uh, data breaks over here, basically it's uh, more like, uh, you know, uh, supporting all the processes over here, um, you know, uh, with the big um, big data engineer over here. So uh, this layer over here normally we use for, you know, big data, but for analysis and more for this as uh, related with the Azure world over here that, um, you know, they, they also now, you know, have created their own Spark versions and everything they do uh, processing the big data over here. So basically Databricks works um, in the cloud. Um, backend is, a, you know, this just provide the framework and on the backend, basically we know all the VMs and the storage will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, will be from the uh, coming from the cloud wherever it's deployed. So we we heard about the you know Databricks is uh, used in uh, different clouds. Uh, it is in AWS. It is, it is in Google. So um, so this framework is basically uh, you know utilized every in in all these famous uh, three clouds. And. Um, we know in operation, of, of course, uh, the uh, other activities like, uh, you know, deployment uh, and monitoring happening. So same way Databricks tool over here also, you know, help uh, to how to monitor. We have workflows, we have uh, Delta live tables over here, which are basically, you know, that what I'm going to uh, uh, little bit demo on that one for, uh, for the, how we are going to monitor the data and uh, you know these items we will discuss. The more important is like um, you know how CICD or DevOps over here is helping uh, to bring actually the security around uh, to the entire flow over here. So it all basically uh, giving a uh, you know a data breaks tool let's say uh, and the Azure Cloud and it all you know coordinated through the DevOps. So we create different, uh, basically, uh, you know, keys uh, and to secure, uh, you know, uh, uh, so the, uh, you know, the pipeline will basically access the uh, all the keys in a secure way, so that uh, uh, it will be processed uh, to the entire flow from beginning to end uh, in a, um, yeah, in a smooth way. And. Um, 
So um, this basically uh, it is so here what I just see there or here because uh, DevOps uh, basically brings all the uh, transparencies and all the data security, um, you know, um, uh, to the uh, for the big data applications. And uh, when we uh, see um, big data, uh, uh, so. Uh, the data engineering portion over here is basically, uh, you know, it, it does all the different activities, um, you know, uh, normally uh, when we see data engineering, basically to extract all the data and, um, and we do all the analysis and we do all the more modeling, um, like we see in uh, uh, Synapse Analytics. So all the, uh, we do all the, uh, all the, you know, modeling around this one on the data during the analysis over here, what as per need of business. And then we visualize the data for, so that they can, uh, you know, see uh, the, you know, what is the trend of the pattern of the data. So data engineering perspective in the big, uh, big data is basically, uh, you know, giving all those, um, you know, basic thing, how we load the data, we clean the data and all these, uh, you know, uh, related, uh, uh, activities come under data engineering. But uh, when we see, uh, you know, uh, DevOps and did, um, and also data dev, so these all data uh, dev one of the activity over here, there are other activities uh, under the data ops over here. So data engineering is the one portion over here. And uh, when we say data ops in other concepts also comes over here, how we bring the quality to the data and uh, data security and data integration. So all these uh, portions over here when we talk about, you know, data operations related. And on the top over here, when we say we want to run all this our application when we have a data, you know, uh, create, uh, created applications. So we can do end to end, you know, taking the help of DevOps. So it is basically bring all the assurance and software development and, uh, you know, business processes all together. And uh, and we can del uh, deliver, you know, as per uh, business, uh, you know, uh, goals. So this is the scenario over here, which uh, basically explains uh, that uh, how we can, uh, you know, uh, we can see how DevOps and uh, uh, data uh, uh, and the uh, DevOps and data op work together. So we can see on the top layer over here. So this is just a one scenario here. When we say it's a secure because uh, our personal uh, IDs are not used during you know working through different environments. So we have keys. So pipeline basically goes and uh, brings all those keys which we define in uh, Azure cloud, uh, cloud. So all the re uh, resource related and all these one. Uh, let's say we have a Git repo. The code normally we store and uh, it brings uh, through the pipelines and, uh, you know, uh, so what happens, all the transformation happen from dev to, to the staging over here. So we use uh, basically the keys rather than uh, personal identities. So here, basically during the dev environment, we use our, you know, uh, uh, our own user IDs and uh, to, uh, to manipulate, we want to, you know, uh, create a solution. And when we go higher environment, we don't want to use uh, personal identities and we want to use through, you know, any service principles or um, managed entities. So, so what we do is basically we take everything, uh, you know, using through, uh, through, the, uh, uh, through these uh, processes over here, getting the keys we save there. So as the, in the diagram, we can see we have uh, some sandboxes related with SQL data breaks and you know, all the testing goes through this one. So these are the three main things over here. Normally when we uh, create a application suit over here, we have uh, of course storage first where we uh, get all the data loaded, uploaded over here. And uh, when we have uh, ADF basically orchestrate uh, you know, anything to be loaded, uh, you know, taking uh, some of the, you know, data and process the data through the notebook and also articulate over here to uh, to the final, um, you know, uh, the data which need to be presented to the, 
uh, to the business. So we bring all the you know data into a structured format so that uh, business can get benefit out of it. And we have uh, from this one we can see from the dev to the stage and then uh, to the uh, uh, to the prod over here. So all uh, are through the pipelines through the keys over here so safely. So nobody individual you know using personal ID and securely uh, the code can be promoted uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the prod. And uh, yeah, so this diagram shows over here, you know, especially Azure uh, kind of snapshots over here. And uh, I will uh, say that, uh, you know, DevOps and big data are two different, um, you know, uh, different uh, units uh, in, so how they basically give us a streamlined process, automate the process, uh, because this DevOps basically help in automating. When we uh, say big data, let's say uh, when we talk about uh, Databricks, which uh, is a uh, you know core tool over here uh, in Azure, we uh, we use this one. So so Databricks also you know um, day by day it's increasing all the features, new features are uh, included, uh, which basically you know brings all the DevOps uh, kind of um, features built built into the Databricks itself so that, uh, you know, any um, um, activities uh, into the Databricks over here can be, um, you know, uh, not dependent to external, uh, you know, uh, resources and uh, slowly they are, you know, optimizing into that direction. But, um, you know, uh, when we need like intense kind of any tool, because as we know that, uh, you know, big Databricks, as provides all the activities, but uh, something, you know, business needs some more uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 flow like uh, uh, any intents over here, uh, security related or ingestion related. And uh, so Databricks also have, um, you know, different connectors. So we can use, um, you know, different databases and, uh, and different monitoring tools. If uh, this monitoring tool, which is available in the Databricks, is not sufficient, then of course, uh, you know, um, the existing uh, business might have a different, uh, you know, uh, monitoring tool. Uh, let's say Grafna or some uh, other monitoring tool. So they can also be, uh, you know, connected. So they created a very uh, flexible kind of. Uh, um, uh, you know, we, you know, those can be connected, and um, you know, existing thing can be also, um, uh, so not need to rework over here. So it, it can be basically, uh, you know, save the cost to the business, and so these also, uh, you know, provide a lot of flexibilities. And um, so I will uh, next, uh, you know, uh, go over here for um, for the demo over here. And uh, in this one, especially, um, uh, we will say that, uh, you know, we will first uh, go how Databricks looks like, some interface over here. Um, the one I'm presenting is not uh, kind of, uh, I will say, um, these are the references. So I, this will be, I think, available to uh, everyone and, I will share my screen and I will go from there. Okay, so what we are saying over here is basically uh, uh, the Databricks and uh, if you already know, that's uh, that's good. If um, you know, if uh, um, uh, you know, uh, then what I'm explaining over here, it will be a breeze. But uh, we know first time when uh, somebody looks over here, it is uh, it have a lot of features, and uh, so I will go through some of the major features over here. Of course, uh, we when whenever we want to basically uh, you know make uh, some of the ETL activities over here. So 
just for demo here. So I have uh, uh, in this my account over here, I created for two flows over here, one through the Delta Live pipeline flows and the other one through the, you know, uh, through the basically uh, scheduled job over here, I created two notebooks over here. So for this purpose over here, what um, I will see over here, I'm just opening uh, the notebook over here. So created a sample scenario over here. Um, so we have a bronze, um, you know, uh, we created a one a table out of from the, from the one of the example, I take like fuel consumption related uh, data. And then I'm filtering over here, uh, basically creating over here bronze fuel over here. Bronze means basically we are taking as it is the data and uh, we are making over here, uh, uh, you know, saving uh, uh, is a kind of a backup over here. And then on the top of over here, we create a silver layer over here. See over here, we are we want to intend basically looking at the data. We want uh, that we want only the vehicle related in this uh, you know uh, as test scenario data over here of the cars related, fuel consumptions related. So we can see what is the make model, and we have uh, different engine size and this one. So I'm just uh, you know, let's say business is only interested in the BMW model and uh, and cylinder greater than zero kind of. So, so we, we are basically, you know, um, selecting uh, um, the, the selected data over here, which uh, uh, need to be further analyzed. So on the top over here, then, uh, you know, looking all that data has been, you know, created into a silver layer. And then we want like, uh, you know, final versions of the data, like we want, uh, you know, ETL, which basically they want what what are the top 10, uh, you know, um, uh, vehicles over here, which basically have four cylinders and uh, I can give us a result over here. So first when we come, basically, of course, we create, uh, you know, these notebooks over here. So this is ETL. Similarly, um, the I created around the same pipeline. So when we, you know, create any Delta Life um, table over here, why is the difference over here? Because I created two, uh, two of the workflows. Because one workflow is like uh, when we say we we uh, uh, we have like we create um, our own compute, custom compute, and then around this one um, we are basically. Uh, you know, uh, selecting everything, and we do. Um, you know, um, uh, we uh, we we basically uh, calculate from ourselves. Where is the Delta Life? It is a managed service. Managed service means we don't have to uh, do any cluster. Um, you know, creation anything. So this is what the service itself. You know, uh, self-sufficient. It do. Um, their own way to create clusters and doing everything by on. So it is kind of a just a one touch show here. We just uh, run the, you know, we just configure and we just run the turn. So all the resources and everything uh, is scalable and everything just we configure once and it will basically, um, you know, um, infrastructure over here automatically will be accessed and everything will be, uh, you know, done automatically. So this is the kind of the same scenario I have dictated, but um, see over here, only the change in the life over here when we, you know, use the word live over here, because so this is for the Delta live uh, option over here. I'm going to, you know, going to show here how these two notebooks are going to be used in the workflows, right? So the first one is a, we have a, uh, you know, created a task over here because workflow, workflow basically it, uh, just uh, go over here and we create different tasks over here. And uh, what is uh, this task is basically, you know, I just provided the name over here and we know where the, you know, uh, in the user, my username, and then we have created this file. I selected this one. And then um, basically we can um, have you know, a lot of, we can pass the parameters and everything we can do uh, in this regard. We can even see over here, if uh, somebody want to schedule, we can schedule. 
if uh, our this file is stored in a git repository we can also add a git repository and whatever the compute we want to select we can create uh, you know different compute over here and this will be like um, you know uh, cluster need to be created for this one and uh, uh, any custom selection over here i mean that uh, this compute have a different cluster we can we can um, basically create custom uh, compute. We can use this one, or we can use, you know, um, job clusters as well. Job clusters are basically, you know, um, are also a compute, but it's uh, related to the more workflows. They are very flexible to use either cluster or job cluster. Both are same, both are compute, but uh, one is basically, um, when we say uh, job cluster, it is basically, um, you know, automatically shut down when the workflows is completed, it will save some of the, you know, um, um, cost for the business. And it is what Databricks recommended uh, to use job clusters when we are using workflows. And yeah, so this is um, um, even we uh, can give permissions, anybody can access, so you can hit any users over here uh, from our group. So you can also see, uh, you know, um, and, uh, the and the job we are going to manage over here. So these are just, uh, you know, uh, some of um, the details about this one. And uh, when we see we want to, uh, of course, uh, want to run this one, we can only trigger this job over here in the workflow. And um, if we click this one and we can run this job over here, like I created over here and run this one um, before, you know, coming over here. So we can see over here, what it does is this one. And so it created over here um, in the default we see, because in this one, we created basically silver one, gold one. If I click the gold one, so, uh, we have created, uh, you know, the gold uh, one over here. We can see this is a sample data over here. So you can see this 10 rows are created as I shown over here. So, um, so, so this basically created and uh, see the all the refinement has been done and uh, what we want uh, top 10 over here. So you can see, you know, after running this one, it basically went and is executed. If the data is changing every time, so we can schedule, we can see the latest data over here. So it depends upon the application and we can schedule, we, we can run frequently so we can uh, see the, you know, any um, latest data over here. Similarly, uh, we have workflows and um, Delta live tables, right? And uh, in Delta live tables, when we click on this one, so we will go, already pipeline is created uh, as I showed the table. We have a bronze, we have a, you know, um, silver over here. So what it is basically, um, we all aware about, um, you know, SQL servers and Oracle. So we create um, basically materialized view. So these are kind of materialized view and uh, they rename it like Delta live tables. And uh, what it does is basically is, um, you know, uh, self-sufficient view over here that uh, it brings to uh, different layers. And what are the advantages? Of course, the advantages, uh, before going to advantages over here, I will want to show over here some settings over here that um, whenever we create pipeline, we give pipeline name and, uh, you know, we have uh, different editions over here. So some are premium, some are pro, or, you know, some are like expensive. So it depends upon the application what uh, you know kind of uh, feature we want to addition use Delta Live one. So it need to be triggered or continuous. So all these selections are over there. So as um, you know, we are using, they are also optimizing and putting, um, you know, so we can have a advanced features like we want uh, data lineage around this one. So it means that uh, this data lineage is basically helpful in the sense that we can also um, basically see how data is created. Let's say from, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm in gold and some day ha something happened that they, uh, I'm not seeing any data in the gold. So this lineage will help where 
you know, um, where from the up, upstream, the data is broke or one column has been changed or something. So this basically visually give us, uh, you know, visualization that uh, which column has been mi missed around this one. And um, so these are different features in premium versions of the Databricks, of course, um, you know, these are everything is visualized uh, um, into, into the, um, into the data over here. So when we run this pipeline, of course, in the Delta Life, so, and we see over here. So one thing important over here, if I click anyone, I can see over here that, uh, you know, all the schema, what it is using and, uh, and uh, it has been written 100% it's uh, data quality over here. It gave us a prompt visualization over here, how our data look like. Similarly, I will go to silver over here. I can see how many columns has been, um, um, we can see, uh, right? So it is actually this, uh, uh, this, uh, I can, okay, sorry. Uh, so see you here, we can see the different quality. So how many records has been dropped or anything has is happened, we can see over here that from out of 100%, so nothing has been dropped. So we can see all the quality over here. So when we see over here, so out of 100%, 10 records and we can see all the details over here about the data. So this is a good point over here that we also see the data quality over here. So after running this pipeline, what happens basically um, as uh, we can see over here in settings, we have uh, say that where to save this one after running. So uh, if we see over here that uh, we want this to store into a default catalog, right? So if we go to the data and we have a catalog over here and uh, we can see uh, we have a default catalog over here and these has been actually come over here. So when we click this one, we can see everything has been you know, uh, displayed. We can see the details, we can see who's permitted, but there is no permission provided for this one. So uh, I haven't included any permissions on this one. So. That's why it's a blank and sample data is over here. I can provide additional permission and we can see the history, how this has been executed and what are the changes over here has been done. But with premium version over here, we also see um, you know lineage over here and other features over here. So when we say lineage over here, what it will show basically visually, it will show um, which columns are there in the, you know, rather than we see in a text format, we also can uh, able to see in a graphical way. And yeah, so most, um, yeah, we can see all the data over here. So this I'm uh, giving you a little bit more overview on the Databricks over here. So we have different kind of uh, see over here. We have SQL data warehouse over here. So we have, like business want to use uh, Databricks for the purpose, easy only use the SQL word, not Python and anything. So they can use, we have like uh, machine learning, they want to run, uh, want to, you know, create uh, uh, any model, training models on the data. So they can also use, you know, this feature purely over here. So data science and engineering purposes, like ETL, like creating a notebooks and all those things. So I'm, uh, we are currently in this mode over here, so we can do this one. So yeah, so see over here, we can have a repos. Um, these are all integrated with the, uh, in um, so client repo uh, have been created over here. So it can be connected to any of the uh, repos to, um, you know, store all these code, what we created, we can uh, put all the codes into repository. Um, of an, our choice, so whether it's a GitHub or uh, so all the configuration has been, uh, we can provide and it will basically uh, save over there. And uh, yeah, so um, in the, in my next uh, kind of presentations, I'm going to basically uh, more elaborate, um, you know, on these uh, features over here, we have different policies, we have different, uh, cluster policies and um, and also different compute and how we are optimizing and this one. So in uh, men, you know, when uh, I have a next presentation, I'm going to deep dive, uh, you know, on these um, 
uh, special features uh, of the Databricks. I think I'm open for uh, questions now and we'll go from there. Yeah, guys, maybe uh, someone has questions. Yeah. And we have question in the chat. Oh, is it? Yep. I, which better to use the file system, DBFS or ABFS? So, of course, uh, DBFS is uh, uh, currently we, we say uh, DBFS is uh, uh, not as um, safe. And uh, in uh, today world, uh, Databricks, we use, uh, you know, ABFS file is uh, more, you know, kind of robust. And uh, and we basically, uh, even creating any of the flows over here, ABFS is uh, more secure and uh, uh, more, you know, entity over here because currently Databricks mostly we use uh, Unity catalogs. So everything is basically managed, not through DBFS, everything is managed and directly through the Unity, uh, you know, console and management over here. So in my next lecture, actually having most exposure on how, um, you know, uh, securely we are working with uh, Databricks, if we want to bring any data from the, you know, cloud and how containers are going to be linked uh, to, uh, uh, to the, you know, Databricks to, so that uh, uh, our catalog can be populated. So most emphasis will be given in our next uh, presentation on that one. Any other question? Yeah, guys, you can unmute and ask. Here, but yeah. Uh, yeah do you use, thank you. Do you use external connect, external uh, data authentication, like uh, NIM roles uh, for the uh, external S3 buckets and external storage in Unity Catalog? Yeah, exactly. So um, exactly, we have a external, uh, you know, catalog. Uh, basically, uh, we have a uh, if we have a any ADLS or a external storage, and uh, we want to connect in um, the uh, into the Databricks. So uh, of course, uh, we have uh, in Unity we create uh, all those external locations, and uh, we provide all the credentials over there. And we create a catalog, which is, uh, you know, a special catalog in a Unity catalog, which basically uh, represents over here. We provide all the permission if it is readable or writable. So, um, uh, yeah, that, that is actually managed, um, uh, is possible through the Unity catalog. But still, uh, I will say over here, some easy way over here that uh, Databricks is currently working uh, on that one, that uh, we, rather than, you know, create um, uh, some uh, some of the configuration in the Azure cloud, but they are basically making it more flexible. Uh, some feature will basically will come very soon on that one into the Unity. And Thank currently, what, yeah. yeah, currently what happens when we create catalogs? So these catalogs are basically uh, managed services. We don't know where you know these um, um, storages are located because it managed uh, by the service itself so we see um, you know um, these files are saved we have whatever the data is saved and uh, these are not external these are kind of managed and they store over there and um, but currently um, yeah this is uh, also possible we like in you know, for the client over here we make it possible for few of the they want like um, some business catalogs they want to use external so some extra effort is uh, needed for the scripting and all those things that we uh, made it possible here yeah. any other question basis and uh... And authentication for different uh, like teams or 
different groups. How does yeah. it work actually between the, uh, for example, for the storage authentication and the database authentication for different workspaces? Yeah, exactly. So uh, in Unity, we have a central management system, central uh, all the AD groups, and uh, you know we create AD groups in uh, our Azure cloud, right? And then what happens basically in Unity catalog, uh, we promote all those uh, um, authentications over here. It's a Unity solution. Basically, that's what uh, uh, Databricks is uh, moving from DBFS kind of, uh, you know, approach now in, uh, so because we know in DBFS is basically, uh, we were using Meta Hive, you know, uh, if we have 10 workspaces, so 10 workspaces there, they have their own access uh, management and everything and, uh, you know, connecting with between two different business unit workspaces is um, very um, a kind of isolate, uh, isolation. So when working in Unity, of course, there is a central management. So uh, it is very flexible if uh, somebody actually want to provide uh, access to another workspace, they just uh, have a graphical user interface go over there and uh, basically provide, you know, uh, I want to give this group access or this person to give access. So it is basically, uh, you know, quite flexible and uh, uh, and in this regard, Unity works, uh, you know, perfect, perfectly fine in collaborative world over here. And then inside Databricks, uh, the user is just able to switch between the workspaces, right? Um, it depends, yeah, if, if um, let's say um, being an admin, so um, people have access to all the enterprise level, you know, account level access to all the workspaces. If somebody have got the access, they can have three workspaces. If uh, we have a grant, they can, you know, um, can use um, other, you know, three workspaces, right? Cool, thank you.